In her small room at the Department of Corrections Southern Maine Reentry Center, Tabitha Osno is surrounded by her memories. It's all she has left. And given the nature of the charges, which are serious class B offenses. Osno and her boyfriend, Alan Richardson, were arrested in March for making the drug methamphetamine in their trailer in the northern Maine town of Danforth. The um, one that we were doing was, they call it shake and bake, pretty much make it yourselves. It's a perfect example of, of a one pot methamphetamine lab. Commander Scott Pelletier of the Maine Drug Enforcement Agency says all it takes is a few common household supplies, some chemicals and cold medicine, and you're in business. And these are what people are making in soda bottles, in Gatorade bottles. You know, they may make four or five at a time, but they're relatively small, but they're, they're extremely dangerous. And extremely addictive. We tried to quit, like, many times, but it just... It had such a hold on you that couldn't do it. Methamphetamine is a powerful central nervous system stimulant that creates a feeling of euphoria. But as the drug wears off, users experience severe withdrawal and an intense craving for more. Long-term use can cause skin infections, rotted teeth, psychotic behavior, organ damage. Addicts say once the drug takes hold, it doesn't let go. It became a problem real quick. Like, you could see from the outside, like, I was watching my life go downhill, but I couldn't stop it. Osno and Richardson had two boys, four-year-old Cobra and five-month-old Mock Daniel. In the morning, we'd smoke some before the kids got up so that we'd be awake enough, and then when they'd get up, we'd feed them and bathe them and... and the baby would play in his swing and would just go through the day like normal. That ended on the morning of March 21st. Osno says she woke to find her baby had stopped breathing. They frantically rushed him to a nearby medical center. One hour later, their trailer was on fire. There just wasn't anything that they could do for the baby. He was already gone. But when they went in, the fire marshal went in to the house. He found them stuff to make meth. The medical examiner's office is not releasing any information about the cause of the baby's death because the attorney general's office is still investigating the case. As for the fire, investigators believe it was intentionally set, but no one has been charged. Tabitha Osno buried one son. She hasn't seen her other little boy since she and Richardson were arrested. She's now serving a two and a half year sentence. And when I talked to him on the phone, he's like, Mom, you know, I really kind of miss you. I'm like, really kind of miss you too, bud. And it was really hard for me to hear it and know that there wasn't anything that I could do about it because of the choices that I made. In 2014, Maine drug agents busted 28 makeshift meth labs. That's almost double the number in 2013. Each time, a special team is called in for the costly and potentially dangerous cleanup. You know, really there are only three outcomes for somebody who's manufacturing meth. One is if they use it long enough, they'll die. Uh, two, um, you know, they'll get caught. Or three is there'll be some sort of fire or explosion during the process. David Coffrin scored two out of three. On February 8, 2012, Coffrin, who worked full-time in a lumber yard, was making meth in his mobile home in Kingfield with two others. He had tried the drug, he says, for the first time just a few weeks before. Twice, Sparks started a fire. I was in the next room and I heard him say, Sparks, Sparks. And then it was just like a cannon going off and right in my house. Once I realized I couldn't put it out, I ran to the back of the trailer and in my son's room and just threw the blankets up over him and wrapped him up in the blankets and uh, ran out the back door. Coffrin's four-year-old son wasn't hurt in the fire. The hurt came later. The hardest thing I ever done was <clears throat> getting right down on my knee, looking him eye to eye and tell him, you can't live with me anymore because I got to go get help. Coffrin spent nine months in rehab. He'll spend eight years in prison. A federal grant awarded to the state last fall will provide funding to hire four new drug agents to focus on the growing problem of methamphetamine in Maine. But for David Coffrin and Tabitha Osno, 
that kind of intervention comes too late. I live with that every day. I always think that if I hadn't started doing it, hadn't started smoking the meth, then maybe things would have been different. I regret it all the time. All these years that, you know, from the time I started doing drugs until this happened, I was always like, yeah, I don't ever want to see crystal meth because I've heard, you know, how addictive it is and how it takes over people's life. And one day, you know, knock on my door, hey, crystal meth. And it's just, that was a wrap.